In complex alpine environments, sometimes a belay from the top ends up needing to be switched to a lower from the top. Here are three ways we can lower a second climber off of a plaquette device. Hi again, I'm Jason. If you are off questing on some alpine route, you may have choices, conditions, or team abilities that prompt us to lower a climber down a route. Sometimes when descending after the climb, it makes sense to lower the first climber down because maybe you lost a rappel device, or maybe a storm has blown in making rope management a challenge. Heck, maybe you have a climber that doesn't yet feel comfortable doing a rappel that will end away from your watchful eyes. Or maybe while still climbing up, that storm has blown in and the second person climbing on belay now can't get the traction to keep climbing. Or perhaps that second climber gets slightly off route and needs to descend some amount to get back to easier climbing. I've seen this with my kids. So if we are using a plaquette style device, here are three ways we can lower a second climber. And I tend to choose the method based on the amount of lowering that is demanded as the setups go from simple but least effective to more complicated but most effective. First, our simplest method. If we have our plaquette in assisted braking mode, then we can take the carabiner that is running through the ropes and simply ratchet it down while maintaining hold of the brake strand. This might be effective for a climber that accidentally moved past a piece of gear to clean or climb themselves a few feet off route, as each ratchet motion will move the climber downward only a very small amount. The next method can work if we need to lower a more considerable distance, but are maybe in a hurry. In essence, I'm doing two things, applying an auto block hitch to the rope in my belay loop to maintain control over the more lengthy lower, and clipping a sling to the load strand through the anchor and then to my harness. By squatting down or stepping away, I am lifting the load strand so that it can't rope block the brake strand, allowing me to feed rope through my auto block. Then there is the third method, which comes right out of the user manuals. We start the same way as the last setup, applying an auto block. But now I redirect the brake strand to a point above the device. Next, I need to get the device itself reoriented to better allow the rope to move through it. So I can girth hitch a sling to this extra release hole on the device and redirect it above, separate from the brake strand on the rope. Again, I can attach this load release to my harness and move away or squat down to lift the device into a lowering orientation. If I'm going to do a long lower, this method runs the most cleanly, but it takes the longest to set up. All of these methods are reversible, so you can dismantle the systems to move from lowering back to climbing. Do you prefer rappelling or lowering? In what context? There are pros and cons to each, but tell us what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. You can take a look at this video about single, double, and tagline repels, or maybe take a look at our entire rock climbing series 
for other tips and techniques. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.